some of us who are not who are not lucky enough to see much of our fathers, mm. our mothers will always remind us that if your father was here, mm. if your father was here, your father was there. So that means that it has it shapes a lot about the character, mm. the behavior of that family. Mm. Mm. The character, the behavior of the family. Do you think Nigeria as a country has characters who speak to them? Well, you could see because, uh, yes, I would say no. Mm. Because why would I say no? 70, when you have over 75% of a situation, you can generalize without committing fallacy of generalization. Mm. So, the society today, the core values that makes the society today is lacking in Nigeria. Mm. You know, Today, we celebrate criminality. We made our life transitional in our ramifications. Mm. So there's no character. The behavior is the least expected. We are living in a life of, I can say, transactional life. Mm. All right, if you want to join us, you've got questions from our side, uh, 0700. 903-903-903. We'll take a couple of questions while we'll have this conversation. Uh, okay, so let's delve into politics real quickly. You went to Egypt. That generated a lot of controversy, your trip to Egypt. What did you go do in Egypt? Well, it's unfortunate. Let me tell you. Let me start by telling you. You see, when you vote people here, this is the only country I know that you vote people in, and when they become say, local government chairman, governor, president, anything. The next thing they start telling is what we saw when we came in. Mm. Or start blaming the, the person they took over from. Mm. A leader, when you're elected mm. and you're in charge, you're not meant to complain. The job of a leader is not to complain. Mm. The job of a leader is not to give excuses. Mm. It's for you to solve problems. And if you're aspiring to lead, mm. that is the time you need to study and know what you're going to do. Mm. So if there's an example anywhere globally, you go there and learn. Mm. Today, go to any record. The highest deployment, a faster deployment of power globally is Egypt, Vietnam, India. Mm. Egypt moved their power from about 20,000 megawatts to 58,000 today. Mm. Between 2015 and 2020, five years, Nigeria as a country Could generate or was able to generate in the sixties over a thousand megawatts. Fifty, sixty years after, they cannot generate above four thousand. That shows a crisis. When these people could in five years increase the power generation by 30 something thousand. So you need to go and learn. I went there. I was taken around the power facility. Met the companies that did it. Went to the ministry. Met the power holding company chief. Met the people in the ministry. Above all, met those who provided the finance. Who provided the finance for that? Of course, they worked on Tonki with Siemens, so European Development Bank did their own. They worked on Tonki with uh, another group, GED. So, and I know that it's easy within a period of five years to move power, generation, distribution, transmission, 
in five years, from where we are today, to 15, 20,000. But, but a lot of people are saying, why didn't you use local content? Why didn't you speak to people in the power sector here? Now, what can you learn in three days? Those are what some of the people are saying. You know, they, they don't know what they're talking I've been speaking to people here. Mm. I need to go and see where it's dead. That's People, there's nothing wrong in learning. It's not as if I was in office and I'm traveling. They want you to be in office and say you're going to travel. Part of the problem we have here is that people don't want to learn. The job, leadership and learning are inseparable. Mm. You must learn always. When I, was, when I was campaigning to be governor, I visited, that was my first trip to Bangladesh to learn how they dealt with the poor, pulling people out of poverty, to know when they, what they were doing about their education. I did the same thing with India, rural India. That's where I found out that while we're going to, into office here and start building the governor's mansion, Governor's offices, governor, they were busy building rural roads to give the people access to bring agricultural goods, which they can sell and make more money. So go ask anybody, as governor of Anambra State, every part in Anambra State was connected by rural roads, bridges, everything. That's what you learn. But when you sting here, yeah, I went there. That's what I'm doing today, and I'm doing it with my own resources. Okay. To learn, you need to learn. Okay, so you went. You, to find, you learn every day. Every, every day. So you went to Egypt to learn, and you've also been talking to stakeholders locally. Uh, I've spoken to stakeholders locally. I went there, and you need to find the finance. It's not when you go there that there's no money. Mm -hmm. That's why people come into office and say what they saw when they came in. What are you seeing? You need to see all those things before you arrive there. Okay. Let's, let's, because there's a lot of ground to cover, let's go straight to the issue about VP and the issue is also about, you know, talking to NNPP. Is there any talk going on with NNPP? Because we're seeing that making the rounds of social media. And then uh, uh, Dr. Daniel Cooper came out to say he's your VP pick. A lot of people say, okay, he's a placeholder. What's the talk about your VP? Well, you know, we're talking to a lot of partners. What we are trying to do, as so you're you know, talking to NNPP? Uh, everybody. Okay. We're, we're talking to, what we're trying to do is not to do it the usual way. Mm. It's not a question of Peter will be being president. We want to build a coalition of Nigerians, especially the youth, to take over our country. 24 years in the hands of these people who hired, the country has deteriorated. Look at the World Bank report a few days ago. Look at what they're saying again. Mm. Now, Nigeria is at its worst stage in economically and it's going to throw more people out of poverty. So after 24 years, the people we hired have thrown millions of Nigeria. When we started, when they, in 1999, when this journey started, about 60 million Nigerians or thereabout are living in poverty. 24 years after, they've doubled the poverty number of people. So it is time to ask the people hired to go, mm. no matter which side they're coming from, because they're the same people. So we need to now get a team of Nigerians, the youth, civil society, everybody together and say, let's come in and work together as a family to take back our country. So Peter B is not going to be your usual president where you stay one place and be given order. We want to build a coalition to save our country. Mm. Because they've run it our ground. Mm. Right. So I also want to talk about uh, you to address this. A lot of people say, yeah, Peter B is just always making comparisons. Always making comparisons. Now what is his manifesto? Okay, now you've gone to learn about power in um, Egypt. What will be your power plan? What will be your plan for subsidy? What will be your plan for debts? We've got over 40 trillion in debts. So it's more. If, yeah, in more and, and even more. So what will be your plan on all of these things? You know, uh, they want, you know, your... Fine, you know, I've right. talked about my plan. 
yeah. in debt mm. as president, which we're going to do by a coalition of third force, mm. nobody will borrow for consumption. Mm. Even if we have to starve, every borrowed funds will be invested. And it has to be transparent. Mm. When people talk about my manifesto and my this, I have done it somewhere. I don't need to go and start putting glossy papers. No, where's your manifesto? Where is, yeah, it? is, there, is there a document? Is there, you've done it somewhere. Is there, okay, you've done it in Anambra State. Simple. You know, we like we like glossy papers. We like these things. It's a simple thing. The country has few issues. You're not going to go. It's not rocket science. We have a problem with the education. Your human capital is too low. We are 152 over 158 in human development index. So you have a problem with the education. You're going to fix it. How you would you fix it? Yeah? How, would you, how are you going to fix it? Of course. Go to Anambra State. That's the typical example. Where we took education from 26 to number one. Hmm. Is it by example or is it not by this thing? You have poverty problem. You need to put people out of poverty. Hmm. Again, go to Anambra State. You see it. And I'm a, I'm a businessman. I started from micro, so I know that to put people out of business, you have to re-engineer, fund and support micro, small businesses. It's simple. So, but you're still going to doing give, that. You're still going to give us a document because Nigerians want to see a document they can. That's what I'm it. saying. They, those who gave them, they, we, they've been sitting in documents for 24 years. Haven't they been seen documents and conferences for 24 years? Yeah, we've been seeing documents. Yeah. So, what is the delivery? I can show you thousands of documents. That's not my documents. Hmm. You know, you even said it. Let those who are writing documents come and see how they will do it, hmm. where they will get the money. I have practicalized it where I took a state from, z from debt to no debt and savings. Okay. Okay. You've, you've said a lot. We will still interrogate a lot of those things. Uh, what you would do as regards debt, what you would do as regards... Would you remove subsidy? It depends on subsidy on what? No, we have subsidy on fuel that we, is, this country spends so much money to sustain. You can't, it's not sustainable because one is, let me tell you, the subsidy itself is fraud. Mm. Because the quantum of consumption in which you are subsiding is not very, it has not been verified. Mm. It's not something that you can say, there's no way we can consume that quantity in an unproductive country. And no production to support that quantity of consumption. So it's, it's fraud. So you have to deal with it. If you deal with it, it might not be that much. And then you ask yourself, so in the removal of subsidy, you have to offer something. So you don't just remove. The reason why people are apprehensive and reject removal of subsidy is that they're not getting anything. And offer. that's why you have to go to other countries and see what they are doing. You don't just stay here and be on your own. And when somebody wants to learn, say, oh, he's going to learn. The world has been changed by learning. Mm. Chinese people came to America, went to their schools, learned what they were doing, went to China, implement. so is other countries of the world. Okay. Whether it's Indonesia, Malaysia, Ghana, everywhere, they do it by learning. They're Egyptians too, learned. Mm. So we must learn. Okay, so there are a lot of problems in Nigeria as we speak. Insecurity is another one. Uh, there are agitations in the East, talk about IPOB, killings in the East, insecurity in every part of the country. This month alone, Nigeria has lost thousands of people to insecurity. What would you do to stop this level of insecurity? The church killings in all war. In fact, it was only Friday we had a mass burial for the victim of the church killings in all war. What would you do? What's going to be your plan to stop this insecurity? I have condemned... All killings in all parts of Nigeria, especially what happened in all, it is unacceptable in a modern society today. It can, it should not be allowed, 
and it must not happen. And I can tell you, if the government is decisive on insecurity, they will deal with it. These are part of the things you ask yourself, what are other people doing? It is not possible to deal with. And I've said it before. You force secure insecurity by two means. One, the same thing with each of all these agitations. You can bundle of them together. The accumulative effect of leadership failure over the years. And to deal with it, you have to be decisive. You deal with it, there's, there's natural security, which is ensuring that you start pulling people out of poverty. You mm. find the more you pull people out of poverty, the more you reduce criminality. So how will you create that wealth? That's what a lot of people are asking. That's why I'm saying supporting small businesses. Supporting small businesses, again, from my studies, even from what I saw it is, comes from you providing power. A lot of small businesses need power to function. So you do that. And like I said, I can say comfortably sitting here that I have. I know what they did. I know how to get this. So you're, now, you're going to solve power problem in five years once you get in. I said, fine. Mm. I'm not going to waste everybody's time. This is a Sunday. Every day I pray my rosary. What I ask God is, if you know I'm not going to solve this, start solving this problem, don't allow, don't allow me to get there. If I get there, Rufai, that was my prayers when I went to Anambra State. God put me here to solve this problem. And when I got there, everywhere, villages I went, there are, there are no road, no bridge, so road and bridge. Connected everywhere. Solve the education. Dealt with but, it to a poverty. But some of your opposition people too in Anambra say, oh, you didn't do so much. Anybody can say anything. They said, they said, they have, anybody can say anything. But I'm just telling you that I took education from number 26 to number 1. Mm. In health, you can see it. There was no single school of nursing, school of midwifery that was accredited. The day I went, when I started. But when I left, I was living office, school of midwifery, school of nursing, EN hospital was accredited. School of midwifery, what a side on each other. School of nursing, Bolomir Hospital, we are credited. School of Nursing, School of Midwifery, School of Health Technology, St. Joseph Addison was credited. School of Nursing, School of Midwifery, St. Joseph Health Technology, Our Lady of Love, we're credited. I'm calling names so people can go and verify. So they were not there. So I'm not telling you what was not there when I started. What, so, yes, I didn't do much because I didn't share the money. Hmm. It, what people consider here doing that is sharing public wealth. And above all, you go and ask, I had 35 billion worth of outstanding gratuities and pension. I cleared it. Those who received it are there. If you go there, they're celebrating. I live in Anambra State today. Mm. That's where I live, and people see me every day because I was able to do that. And above all, I left 75 billion. Okay. But people are asking in all of this the exact way you will solve, you know, what particularly would you do to solve the insecurity problem? Are you going to increase the number of troops, increase the number of soldiers? Completely, completely. Let me tell you how many soldiers are the you going police, to yeah, the police, yeah. The police, for example, for 200 million, you have about how many? About 300 and something, yeah, less than 400,000. Thank you. In this country, yeah. Nigeria needs at least a million police, so you increase to a million police if you get completely. That. Would, would you support state police? Would you restructure Nigeria? Would you take it back to the former old regional system where the center doesn't have power and it's about the regions? No, no. When you talk about restructure, mm. you're talking about state police. Mm. Yes. We need state police. So the first thing you do, you tell the National Assembly you need state police, right? Not just that I need state police. Every governor will be in charge of his police, even the national one. If we take a police commissioner in the state, the governor will be in charge. If he doesn't want the commission, commission, he will go. That has been done in Nigeria before. It's not going to start now. Under Obasanja and Yaradua, 
I was able to change my police commissioners. So, uh, restructure in the sense of funds allocation. Would you allow states control their resources? Like, if there's oil under my ground, you see, this thing has to be gradual. Yeah. Yeah, of course, yeah, I said I moved Nigeria right. from. Remember, I said I moved it from from sharing formula to production formula. They are not going to be done overnight. Mm. There are things that will be gradual. There are things you can do immediately. There's no reason why a state governor should not be in charge and in charge and in charge of security and hold him responsible. Even if you're going to give him federal police and he has state police, a combination of two of them, because security is very, very critical. We must secure the country. Okay, so some and it will be immediate. Because I'm streaming live on Rufai Hosseini and on uh, Voice of the People 90.3, uh, YouTube and on Facebook, we're all streaming live. You know, a lot of people keep saying this talk that, hey, Peter will be used uh, state finance to do his family business. Please address that. W what is going on as regards that? Which um, family business? So that's what people are saying. Uh, which though. family business? Anybody can say, which family business? You know, people, because we live in a country where people are not, don't celebrate good things, mm. because we celebrate criminality. Rufai, which family business? Can they show? Can they call one family business? Mm. You know, they just tell you all sorts of things. No criminal leaves what he can steal. Mm -hmm. No criminal. That's why even if you go to church, they tell you to protect your phone. Mm -hmm. Rufai, I left almost hundred billion. When I have the powers to take it, in any other country, I will have the highest award. I will have the Queen's Award in the UK. I will have it anywhere, but because. This is a criminalized country. Nobody will celebrate it. Show me one governor, apart from Yaradua, let Yaradua, who left five billion. Now they leave it dead, and they celebrate them. Look at the amount of money people are borrowing today. I didn't borrow one couple. Let I left dollars and everything. I saw somebody yesterday. He told me he's the managing director of NIPP. And I said, yes, I invested $59 million in this exercise. So which family business? Every business I was doing, if anything, my family business, everything collapsed because I went to do God. My own business collapsed. Where was I? Before I became governor, I was chairman of Fidelity Bank. I was director of Guardian Express Bank. I was a director in three banks. And I'm there by virtue of my investment. I was only 10% of each of those facilities before I became governor. I have a track record of what I was doing. I can go on and on and show you businesses I was doing. Before I, before I became governor, I'm a colored man living in England. And I can raise about $10 million OD. Mm. No Nigerian that I know today can tell me that in 1995, he can go, he was getting overdraft from his bank of the amount I was getting. So as in 1995, you were getting overdraft for over 10 million pounds? No, 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 I was getting over 1 million pounds oh, in 1 England. Million pounds. As in 1 million pounds. 1 million pounds in overdraft. Overdraft. So what are they talking? I'm not, if, today, Rufai, what, what family business? Where is the family business? I want to know the family. You ever say family business? Which family business? Mm. Can I show you one? Mm. All right. So a lot of people are saying structure, structure, structure. Obi doesn't have structure. He doesn't have structure like grassroots party. Take for example, look at the ele elections yesterday in Ekiti. Vote buying everywhere because they say, okay, some people have structure and they like that. You don't have structure. That you just have a lot of people, a bunch of people that love you so much on Twitter and they like. What are you doing as regards that? I have structure. What's the structure? That's why I'm mobilizing all Nigerians. Those people who are being paid money to vote are only doing one thing. They are committing suicide. Mm. For me, the structure I have today is we have hundred and something million naira living in poverty. The structure is whether do you want to continue living in poverty or do you want to save your life? Mm. The structure is those unemployed youths that are being arrested every day, even for owning a laptop, when other countries are giving their people laptop, 
Do you want to continue be in this circumstance? Those people who are being owed pension and gratuity and are coming every four years to give you 10,000 or 5,000, do you want to continue like that? Or do you want your gratuity and pension paid as I'm going to do? The lecturers who are not paid, the students who are not in school, it is for them to decide. You, heard, you are talking about what I did. Mm. You heard somebody saying that the only university that is not shut down today is Anambra State University because of what P P P Toby did. Mm. That's what I was going to do. They have a school. It's an abomination in a country that did not meet up to a quarter of high school intake to shut it down for months. Mm. Okay. I mean, a lot of questions are coming in. And please, you can send your questions. You can say to the WhatsApp number 0700-903-903-903. A lot of people are trying to call us up. We'll take your call at, at, at the specific time. We're streaming also on Voice of the People on uh, uh, YouTube, Voice of the People 90.3 on Facebook. Lots of questions are coming in. Uh, a lot of people are asking, you know, about the candidacy of Peter B. You know, vis-a-vis -vis the political structures in Nigeria today. They say you are, this is the first time with Labour Party. In fact, I had Shoare here last week, and Shoare was saying things like, uh, last election, Labour Party got 5,000 votes. Now, what would change with this time around? What what, what would you say as regards that? And Let's take, for instance, people like Ebony State Governor Dave Omari that said they will not vote for you in Ebony State. And people like uh, Fadam Bakar that said, because you don't give them money, that you can't become president. Anyway, it's come out to apologize for that. No, um, let me tell you. I don't want to. Uh, for me, Father Mbaka is an ordained priest of God. And as a priest, he remains my priest. And I will always respect and show my allegiance to the church. Mm. And whatever he says, I take it because I'm, he's my father. Mm. He's my father in faith. Mm. And I respect him any day. And he's my brother. We're very close. Mm. That's my own decision. And whenever he says something wrong, I provide. it. Mm. If he says something right, I provide. it. So mine is prayers. Mm. And as I, whatever he does, I love him. This is me, because so he's a priest of God. So despite all of I this, you love Adam Baka. I don't have any problem mm. with him. Whatever he says, I put it in prayers. Mm. If he says, I'm not going to be voted because I don't have money, mm. my prayers is, may God see, make these people who are collecting money to vote. To see reason why they should not do so. Mm. That's prayers. Mm. In fact, if I had, if I had, uh, I traveled when he said that, if I was there, I would tell him, since you have seen this, pray for me to overcome it. Because actually, that's what I tell to every pastor. I meet pastors every day who tell me, Peter, this is going to happen. I said, since you've seen it, let's pray that it doesn't happen. That's one. Two, I don't want to make comment about other presidential candidates. Hmm. But they are making you know, about you. A lot of them no, no, are no. About For you. me, it's just social media buzz. You no, no, no. I'm, if, very I'm not. I'm not in business of make. My business is to say this is what I will do, hmm. and then judge me from where I was hired before. Hmm. Of all the people who are contesting today, hmm. nobody. Hmm. I can say categorically. Comes with my background. Mm. I'm a businessman, mm. a trader who started business small and built a business. I've been in the corporate world. Mm. I've been around. I've been governor. They have passed through the same trajectory. Let them show their record and say, We've trusted you with this. Refine the problem in Nigeria is management of our resources. These people have all been entrusted with the resource management. How did they manage it? Mm. So it's not for you to come and say, oh, you're a gentle man, you're a nice man, you're a kind man, and everything. But you were entrusted with public resource. What did you do with it? Mm. That's all. Tell us how you manage it. And then we can entrust you with more. Mm. Essentially now we don't have anything. We need a manager of resources who can deal with these issues and be able to pull our country out of the brink. Mm. You don't go away. You have a financial and economic crisis. You go and hire a musician mm. 
or hire a nice man. No. This is not time to hire people who are gentle. Huh? What is the problem of the country? You have millions of people who don't know where the next meal will come from. Mm. So it's not certain to say Peter B is a nice man, Peter B is charitable, he's a somebody who gives Yeah, you. they say you're stingy. That's another one they've been saying. No, no, no. Because I'm bringing everything to the fore, so you address all this issue. They say you're stingy. You know, there's a talk about, uh, you know, they give shishi and did, did, did you read what uh, Bianca wrote? Yes. Go and read it. It's a true story. I've given away more money than all these who give away money. What I don't do is that I have allergy for money being wrongly spent, mm. public or private. Mm. I don't spend money carelessly. I spend it for what it is used. And people can see it. it, it, it and it has nothing to do with anybody. It has to do with my own, even my family. Mm. Everybody knows. If you call my wife today, I will tell you, Peter will not buy this. Peter will not do this. Peter will not do this. You know, I have a young man who traveled to Rwanda this morning. I was supposed to travel with him, but I had to cancel because of it. I had to travel this, he was going to travel today, and he said to me, Oga, I booked your hotel in so and so so place. But they said it's a $1,500 a night. I said, no way. I'm only just paying to sleep. How can you do a thing like that? Where are you staying? He told me he's staying in a hotel where he's paying $300, uh, $250, $300. I said, is it not bad that they have this? It's bad. I said, so am I going to? So why would I pay five times more for the same thing you're going to sleep? Is it not the same? And it's a good hotel. Mm. And so I don't, money is meant to be used for something that is useful. Not for any other thing. Mm. You read me and casting mm. how I got to America. We were going for dinner. He asked me that he took me to a place. Mm. Nice. It's my wife of my boss. Mm. So I see her as my mother. So he took me to a shop as the mother would take his son. And when he got there, it's the wife of my leader. And when I got there, we saw a suit for $3,800. And I thought, I said, what for? It's just a suit. I'm not going to, am I going to wear the price tag on it? Yeah. We went to another place, bought one good one for less than $250. And I went to the same place. And nobody said, notice, everybody still told me, you have got a good suit. But when I was leaving, he told me about somebody who didn't have a problem. So I gave him the difference between the suit I bought and the one we saw. Because that money was meant for that purpose. Mm. Okay. So that's what it is. Okay. I've been to, in the past, since I left government, I've been to over 200 secondary schools, hospitals, and everything. Sokoto, Nasarawa, Kogi, everywhere. Giving schools computer money. That's what it is meant for. Okay, okay. Sp talking about schools. School is on strike. ASU is on strike. What would you do to end ASU strike permanently? I said it earlier. Mm. It shouldn't be. Let me tell you. Mm. They have agreement with 2000, 2009 with government. Mm. I never renegated on any agreement. If you must ring, you negotiate it. Mm. If, if, for example, federal government agreed 2009, that was the same time that was the same time I, I, I had the same issue, and we negotiated. Mm. They came to me and said, this is the amount we need. Mm. In a state university, I said, no, I can't afford it. This is what I can pay. Mm. And we have been paying it gradually. Even the government of Nigeria have been paying that money, maybe not in full, but gradually. We won't be there. But for you to sign an agreement, that's like what happens with our government. This is the only country government signs a contract with people and go away. I know a state where a governor bought a vehicle, that's the traditional rulers, got all the chieftaincy title, and he was going for those vehicles for over four or five years. Go and ask everybody from Minnesota to Cross to Globe Motors, to everybody that bought vehicle from. I paid them up front. You've seen Minnesota say it every day. Mm. Where else does I bought furniture from? 
As does the board computer from. That's what government does. Government is a big spender. You pay people to support their businesses. No contractor, no supplier was owing the day I left office. Okay. What would you do about local governments? The local governments are always sidelined by the governors and they take their money away from them. What, what would you do to ensure that the local governments are truly local and, and dear to the people and they have funds to run? Fantastic. There's a law now which mm -hmm. says their money should get to them. Mm -hmm. But also, I still maintain in, in, in talking about issue of the structure, which we talk uh, of federalism, yeah. is only two federating units, federal and state. But we do it in such a way that the local government will exist and will be supported by direct financial support. If there's anything that's going to come from them in terms of whatever is going to be shared, they will get it. Okay. Uh, we also like to talk to you about this. See some questions people are asking. And in case you don't know, we're streaming live Voice of the People 90.3 FM. Go to YouTube. Just type Voice of the People 90.3 FM. You'll be able to watch us live here. We'll have a lot of people joining us. Uh, what some people are asking here is that uh, there were Labour ca Party candidates in the Akiti election. Why didn't you campaign for them? Very good question. Mm. If I, I became, I joined Labour. Today is 19th of June. Mm. That means I've just been a Labour member for about three weeks. Mm. You know, I remember, don't forget. I even went to Ekiti to campaign for my candidacy of PDP twice. Mm. And they were never. The Labour candidate, Labour did their primary. The primaries of this election were done about, I think, either February or March, some, mm. so, several months ago. You know, and when I joined Labour, if you ask the chairman and the, and the, and the end of the, his team, I said, Chairman, from today that I join you, mm. I'm involved in your activities. Mm. Your activities of the past, I will participate or might not participate. Mm. Because I don't want to be involved in the controversies of the past. Mm. But from today that I'm a member, I'm going to be part of what you people are doing. Mm. And that's what I did. Unfortunately for me, though, mm. the party chairman and the party leadership, we are supposed to say, well, Mr. Obi, we're going to go to Ekiti for the final campaign. Mm. Didn't mention that to me. And quite frankly, I have, as I speak to you today, mm. maybe I have, maybe I haven't mm. met with the governorship candidates. Because mm -hmm. I joined, we did our primary, and since then I've been running around mm. trying to sort out a few things to be able to, all of us are working out to stabilize the party yeah. for the future elections. There's a, it, this happens in every company. Yeah. It happens in every association. At the time you end the association, you are more focused on trying to get the association right for the future. You miss a few of the things that are. It was too close for us to be dealing with a kitty or soon election. We'll deal with it. But most importantly, we are organizing the party for the future. Mm. All right. Thank you so much for that. They, they say a lot of this OB boss is not in the north. That how will you win the north? That they are not talking about you as they are talking about you in the south and the north. Well, and also, somebody also sent another question. They said there was a picture of you sharing money at a, at a what is it called? That I think when then you were sitting in the PDP or the PDP rally or something. They said, how is that? Is that, does that mean that you're putting the money to good use? In fact, there's a story that says, former governor Peter will be pictured sharing money in an Anambra governorship election. That's at legit.ng. So, a lot of people are asking you on that, you know. So, these people... You know, you know when people talk about sharing money, huh? Mm. Uh, um, if I go to my village mm. and I bring old women and everybody, mm. and when I come, they would say to me, Peter, I would sit there and I give them money. And you know why I do it? That if I even give somebody to give it to them, you know what they will tell me? When I say, I'm going to give this money to this, they say, no, no, give it to us here. Yeah. You're a good man. We want to queue up here. You give it to us. Because when you give that money, it won't get to us. Mm. And most times, I just say them, and as you're doing it, People are picking and they say, yes. Mm. You know, so some of these things may happen. Mm. 
you know, but not that I'm sharing money for, okay, if the show is in Alhambra, am I sharing money to be voted for? Mm. No. Like when we are campaigning, even for in the last Republican election, you come to a place, they say, hey, Peter, give us something. So you might have a, a group of 10, 20 women who are selling bread, and they say, oh, God, Peter, we haven't sold anything today. Oh. This is, a, and you give them father. That is different. Mm. Rufai, nobody can tell you that they have seen Peter B, where they are doing voting, giving anybody money to vote for him, or see me with any delegate. Okay. So, so that picture Sherry, during the PDP campaign is not true. I've just told you the circumstances that I could go. Let me tell you, me and Abaribe, Abaribe can tell you this. I told Abaribe one thing when we campaign. I said, Abaribe, I live in Onicha. I live with the people. I finished being governor. I didn't want to leave anything outside where I governed. So I live with the people. Let me show you. Me and Abaribe went to buy bread. The woman who was selling bread, there were several bread sellers. There, the first person said, Ogapita, take bread free for what you did. And I said, Madam, how many bread do you have today? He told us a story that he used to take 10,000 naira, buy 40 bread at 250, 250. He'll sell it at 200 naira and he will make 2,000 for the day. And he has four children, so he will go back. But that today, Due to the increase in everything, that is 10,000 naira and I'm buys only about 20 bread and you sell it 550, 550. So you make 1,000, 1,002. And he was still able to give me one. Mm. For that is 10,000, for that is 1,000. To show you how Nigerians are, how good the poor Nigerians are. Yeah. Except that we, the rich ones and the poor, have refused to help them. Okay. She was still. So, and I said to them, so all of them there, I can now say to them, okay, madam, I'm giving you dash, 10,000, and I want you to give all these people here to 2,000. So you can give them to, so people will see you giving them. And they say, oh, I'm not giving them money to vote for me. Okay, okay, that's clarified. We'll start taking calls now. Voice of the People 90.3, that's on YouTube. Go there now in case you're hearing me. Also share it, put it in your pages. Um, voice of the people on Facebook, all right? Uh, go there. Uh, I also want to answer the question about the North. But please, yeah, I, I, want I, to, I want to answer it, but okay. you said... Okay, no, go ahead. Answer it, then I come to the calls. Yeah. Those who are saying that the noise is about the South, is about the North, you know, it has to start, the noise has to start somewhere. Mm. The recognition has to start somewhere. Mm. We'll find nobody's recognized from everywhere at once. Mm. Whether it's the stars, those who play football that we celebrate, they start with the club somewhere. Mm -hmm. They start street football. They play for Division 3, Division 1. Mm -hmm. Eventually, they will get there. Mm -hmm. The same thing is what happens everywhere. When a star is rising, it starts from somewhere. And you get, when the moon is coming, it starts from so Everything starts from somewhere. So it will not be a universal thing. Mm -hmm. So if Peter will be is known and celebrated in the South. The people in the South, and I'm young, the young one, to tell their colleagues in the North, this is the man who can solve this problem, or he can do this, or can do this. Today, people talk about religion, people talk about tribalism, people talk about this. What I'm telling the poor people in Nigeria, it is that this is the language we, the elites and the politicians, are using to deceive them. Mm. Show me where in Nigeria food is cheaper than the other. So I can go there and buy. Okay. Show me where there's good roads for Muslims. So I can drive past it. Or where there's good roads for Christians. Show me where it is secured for Muslims to live. Mm. Our president is from Katsina. Mm. It's Katsina, Dubai. So I can go there and live. Okay. So when people are bringing all these issues... I just need to see the poor people. Poverty in Nigeria is all over. Mm. That's why agitations are all over. And okay. what I want to solve is poverty. Okay, so uh, definitely you don't believe in a Christian Christian ticket. You do a Christian a, a, Muslim, a Christian Muslim ticket for religious balance, right? What 
whatever we can use to bring unity and balance in a cohesive we need one of the things I like in Nigeria now is cohesion. Okay. So whatever you can introduce to bring cohesion, that's why I support everything, whether it's rotating the presidency, whether it's rotating the governorship, whether it's this religion, everything. We live in a diverse, multi-religious, multi-ethnic society. You need to bring everybody along and have a sense of balancing. And for me, cohesion is critical. You need to bring this country back where we used to love each other. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. We'll take a couple of calls now. Please, 30 seconds when I come to you. Ambassador Musba, how are you? Okay. Ambassador Musba, Good morning. 30 seconds. Because a lot Good of people want to talk to Peter. Yeah, okay, okay. Good morning. Yeah. I'll talk for the you people. Give me an opportunity. Hello. Give me an opportunity to talk to Peter. Okay. How are you doing, my brother? Can you hear me? Yeah. For yeah. me. Good, yeah. I'll talk from you believe in Nigeria. This country, Nigeria. He said, do you believe in and, Nigeria? Uh, yeah, quickly. Do you believe in Nigeria? Yeah. Yeah, one second. What can you do to beat everybody together? Where are we going to be? No Christian, no Muslim, no religious. We live with okay. all love. Religious harmony. Religious harmony. Do well, let, let, me t- let me tell you, yeah. I believe in Nigeria. And I believe we can unite everybody. Hmm. All these things you're seeing is what politicians are used to divide us. Hmm. We can be together. Uh, there's no country where I've seen where people who are progressive and productive does not live together. Mm. Everybody today wants to go to Dubai. If you go to Dubai, the Catholic Church in Dubai was built by the Emir of Dubai. Mm. And it comes to worship there, I think, three or four times a year. It comes there on Christmas, comes there on Easter, because you sit conspicuously there. I go there and I go there to, for service. And I've been fortunate enough to have been in one of the ceremonies that he was at. The, he attended. He built the church. Muslims used to build in some, one of the best schools, Christ the King, in, on the, um, um, here in, um, let me remember, just in Ogun State here. Mm-hmm. The land was given and main school building was built by a Muslim. I can go on and on and show you. Most of all our people, people like Sanusi, like me, the former CBN governor, Ahmed Muaz, all of them were educated in a Catholic church, in Catholic school. So all these things you see is confusion created by elites and politicians due to bad governance. Okay. What we need is to pull people out of poverty. There's poverty in Kanu, there's poverty in Okay. There's poverty in Enugu. Okay. We need to start pulling people and bringing them together. Okay, let's see if we can take quick calls. 30 seconds, VOP 90.3. Hello, how are you? All right, good morning, sir. My name is you know? Great to have you. Uh, Peter is listening yes, to you sir. live. All right, sir. I'm um, sorry, I want to ask um, what is the excellence, our upcoming excellence? What is he going to do for the less privileged okay, and the insecurity aspect? The less privilege and insecurity aspect. Let me take one more call before you answer that question. So we can take a lot of calls. Uh, VOP 90.3 uh, on uh, YouTube. Please, if you're going out there, uh, also subscribe so you can get more great content like uh, this. And uh, also, please do not forget uh, that we are taking more calls on 0700-903-903-903. Uh, if you can call me now so I can take your calls 30, 30 seconds real quickly. Hello, how are you doing? Good morning. Good morning. 30 seconds. What's your name? Where are you calling from? My name is Chuka Chude. Chuka Chude, your question. I want is... to I want to tell you a distinguished guest. Yeah, question. We've been seconds. having politics. In, yes. In the new dispensation from 1999 till mm. date, I have not had a presidential aspirant speak like Mr. Tito did. Yeah, your question, please. I am one not a lot of people I, here. Yes, and I want to say he's the most interviewed person on radio station. Okay. You know, this, is that, is uh, that your uh, question? Uh, so we can go straight to it. Okay. So it's not a question. I want to pass a comment to him. I'm proud of him. And Thank I'm, you, I'm from Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, my co founder here, if I will, because sends his regards to you, the line is busy. Maybe if he can make it down, but I'm not sure he's busy in church because up to this morning, one thing you don't know about this interview is that. We just confirmed this interview 8.30 a.m. this morning because Peter is a very busy man. So up to this morning, 
we had not confirmed. That's why it wasn't announced. Hello, how are you? Hello. Hello. Great to have you. 30 seconds, your name? Apu Adama from Ibibu. Okay, great to have you. Talk to Peter Obi. My great Thank you. governor, talk and do. I remember when he was the governor of Anambra, he do well. May God bless you. That's the only half of what I have to tell you. Thank you so Thank much. You. Really appreciate God will be with you, my governor. God will be with you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so yeah. much. All right, please, uh, viewers on the YouTube, please subscribe to our page. It's really important. Subscribe, support us. Hello, how are you doing? Great to have you. Your name, where are you calling from? Yeah, my name is Kanye. Yeah. Okay, my question is to is there something is that currently, I don't see any Labour Party aspirants are contesting for governor, house of rep, house of assembly. So it's still on the structure. The question is how will he manage the Senate without Labour Party? How will he manage the House of Rep? How will he manage all of them? Because all these people are very important okay. before any presidential that, candidate can be really successful important. in Nigeria. That's really important. Thank you so much. Uh, my sister, Dr. Iberi, powerful woman out of the UK, will still call you after we have Peter B. You know, you will talk to us about the healthcare sector. She's a powerful one, work with the Blair Institute. I'm sure you're listening to this. So sorry, we are not calling you now. Please forgive us. Hello, how are you doing? 30 seconds, please. Yeah, hello, good morning. Yeah, morning, yeah. My president, Peter. Yeah. Thank you. Obi, God bless you. Rafael. Yeah. Rafael, this is Mr. Francis. I go for the blind man. Okay, Mr. Francis. My president, okay. my young president. Mm. Baba, God, I draw you out to be God to that. So to change this country, to train, to touch people like us, blind people like us. Okay. And nobody will stop you. Okay, Unless thank you so much. God has not signed, signed it. Peter, I know, Rafael, let me use this opportunity to talk to my brother. Just thank one so minute. Much. Peter no, B, I know. One minute, oh, 30 seconds. It's 30 seconds. Okay, Everybody, okay. Your time okay, is okay. Be... I apologize. Let's take other calls. A lot of people are calling. All right? A lot of people are calling. Okay, Dr. Iberi, a powerful Mabiri Kiriki from the Blair Institute in the UK. She just said, oh, she's listening to us all the way in the UK. This was the woman that made it possible. She worked on the fact that she championed the cause so that we start pro producing COVID-19 vaccines in Africa. Very top Blair Institute health you know, administrator in the UK. Very good, good person. All right. Uh, so my co-founder, if I will be could send his regards to you and definitely we'll still have more engagement. But please subscribe when you follow us. Uh, all right. Uh, I'm taking comments on YouTube. A lot of people are saying, Obina, you be cool. May God bless and protect you. Let me take more 30 seconds call. Hello, how are you? Hello, good morning. My incoming president, Mr. Peter Great to have you. Yep. Thank you. Uh, this is my recording from Ajegule. Yeah. So what are you going to do about the business area in Nigeria, the business issue? Like for me, since I started in 2018, me being to stand in my business, I find it difficult. I, I even sleep in the shop because the little money that I will use to let me rent, a, rent an apartment, I will still use the food in the shop because of the cost of goods. So please have to do something about it. And you have to help us. Please, be the business people. I'm really finding it difficult to cope, sir. Please. Okay, thank you so much. Business people find it difficult to go. Hello, how okay. are you? What's your name, your question? Uh, good morning. I'm Sonto from uh, Anambra State Music, actually. Okay. Uh, yes, I just wanted to know, like, you know, we, the students, we are actually confused. Everything, the whole situation of the country, everything. We just want to know because it seems we, we actually don't want to, uh, like, the practice political apathy, but we are seeing it. It's as if we are losing hope. The students are losing because money. of the recently concluded election in the United States. I don't know the okay. case of both buying and nothing yeah. actually done about it. Very sad. So I don't know what does Mr. Peter we have to like. Okay. Well, how will we solve this issue? How because okay. it's as if our vote don't count. Okay. I don't know. Like, you are disgruntled. Okay, vote this is, count. there's about okay. five questions. Yeah, yeah. So you should answer them. Somebody uh, said, "How do I, I, I deal from. with less privilege?" Yes. yes. Security. Mm. The purpose of government, the reason why state came, people came together to talk about government mm. and existence of government is because of the less privilege. Mm. Is to protect the main job of the government is to protect the interest of privilege, mm. the poor people in the society. That's what our society is not doing today. Mm. And that will be priority. That's why I said, rather than start building governor's mansion and um, First lady's mansion. I went to open the rural roads. Road, yeah. yeah, it's done in an area called Ayamelum in Anambra, Anambra West, 
everything. You can go there and say, something. what did Peter Obi do for you? Mm. Because it's critical. So for me, I can answer this question with what the young man asks about businesses. Mm. Governance is about protecting micro, small businesses. Mm. This is the engine of growth of every country. Mm. I will support that to be able to turn around the economy. And I'm a finance person. I'm a trader. I have a combination that I'm coming from where I'm a micro business person. I'm an entrepreneur. And I'm a finance person. So I know what you can do. And I know that this country, I'm talking from experience. And I've done it somewhere. And people have seen it. We have supported businesses. If you go today and go to all the businesses in Alabama, they will tell you what Peter Obi did. Mm. How you open up industrial park where people built industries. Jordan came to a commission about five, six industries there. Mm. If you go there, they will show you in nature. They will show you what we're doing. If you go to Newi and go to Enosin, to the um, Chickasin, they will tell you what we did. Mm. It's simple. So it's not in I listen to the blind man. This is a country that never cares for anybody with disadvantage. They don't care for anybody who have any form of challenge. Mm. Because it is not a country, they're not even caring for those who are well talking. So it is something we need to go into. It is critical, it is important. People ask about issues, look at students talking about. They are confused. Mm. Why should they be confused? They should be in school. Schools are open in Ghana. And people are going to Ghana to go to school. Somebody told me, uh, when I was traveling to Egypt, I met three people who said, they're in school in Egypt. Mm. You know, they, why would that happen? What are they demanding? Mm. We have a situation where people are, one person is stealing 80 billion. Mm. Wouldn't that have been paid to the thousands of people we didn't have made impact. Mm. We're celebrating criminality in the open. People are sharing money and all that. And then they're saying another person is stingy. Even those who are telling you that they saw me sharing money, let them go and show you. Maybe I get somebody 10000 or $20,000. Mm. But people are sharing even foreign currency mm. that we're, we can't even find for those who want to import goods that they need for critical areas, mm. spare parts and everything. You cannot get. Mm. You can't move by transport to anywhere in this. It's so expensive. Nigerians can't even travel. Because if I want to take bus now and turn it, it costs me between 10 and 15,000 naira. Mm. If you want to go by air, it's 50,000 naira. When you have a minimum wage of 30,000. So if you earn 30,000 naira and you want to travel to go and see your parents, you probably need to to and fro, you need to borrow money to even just enter the motor. Not to talk about bread you give them when you get there. That cannot work. So we need to make the country productive. That's why I said we'll move from consumption to production. But those who are holding it hostage refused. Those who are sharing money to be there, are they saying they're going to work? No, Rufai. You cannot share this amount of money if your purpose is going to work. And like somebody said about comment, and, and the most interview people, let this book come. The word campaigns are done all over the world, Rufai. It's by people going around every corner of the country, talking to people, saying the same language every day. But here is the only place we vote people. They're not talking. They're not doing this thing. They're not telling you to verify. If it was a governor who served before, he didn't tell you the amount of money he was owing when he left. Okay, uh, let me take one or two calls more, and I have to let you go now because we both agreed ten thirty, and I know you have to go for another event real quickly. So I have to let you. Go. I'll take the final call now. But hey, you can watch the interview all over again of Voice of the People ninety point three FM. Uh, my co-founder, uh, because we're three founders pretty much. My co-founder is saying he's from Orairi in uh, Anambra State, actually. So my local government. That's your local government. So he sends his uh, regards. Uh, hello, how are you? Uh, hello. Good morning, Mr. Rafai. My name is Tunde. Tunde, great to have you. Tunde, you my, have the final word. Okay. Mm. Okay, so let me just go quickly. It is said that a president is as good as cabinet. 
yeah. yeah. as his cabinet. I would like to ask, will Mr. Peter reward his political friends with um, appointments? Good. Or will he, will he employ competent hands in those, in those spaces? Then secondly, quickly, how is he going to tackle corruption? Okay. For example, the former Anambra state governor is having corruption charges. If Mr. Peter Obi becomes president, will he overlook such because they are friends or colleagues? Very good. That's Very my, good. Those are my uh, That's questions. And I'll like question. to Okay, so Mr. Peter well, just said he was Go and look at how I did appointments in Anambra state. Hmm. Go and look at how I've appointed people in organizations where I have interests. I have never appointed people based on political or other association. It is based on competence. You have, even if you have other things you want to do to reward those who are close to you, there's so many ways you can do it, but government is all about reward. If you build a better society, those who are close to you will benefit because if they have business, their business will thrive. So all this thinking you are rewarding, you can't reward a competence. You can't reward failure. Because if you're going to give somebody a, a, who is not qualified to do a job, all of you are going to fail. I didn't do it in an embrace. I had people based on competence. I had them based on their capacity to deliver. And that's what I'm asking Nigerians to do with me. And he talked about corruption. I have a different view about the way we fight corruption. Totally different view. First, if you the person who is in charge is not yourself corrupt. Your family and the people around you are not corrupt and stealing. You reduce it by 70%. So for me, I will spend my time where I devote 10% to the past. 90% to today and tomorrow. Those who think about yesterday and today will miss the future. Recall when I was, uh, I was debating, I said, you can't shut down your shop and chasing thieves. So you cannot come, if you look at what is happening today, okay, the president of Kandanjara, Kandanjara was said the other day to have taken 80 billion. Yeah, True yeah, or false, yeah. I don't know because I'm not part of this. But if you look at all those who are arguing that have taken money recently, mm. they have arrested from Rochas or Totris to everybody. Mm. They are not up to 10 billion. And their own happened several years ago. Some of them we can't even recover mm. if it's true. I don't know whether it's true or not because mm. I'm not preferring. But I'm saying we are busy chasing. Small boys who they said did Yahoo, Yahoo mm. and took uh, two million, three million, even going to talk about uh, debt collect, collection or even chasing people who are. Uh, but we left those who are taking billions. Mm. For me, I will focus on today. Mm. For example, we are borrowing money, but the amount of money we are missing can actually supplement for what we are borrowing. So it is. Critical that you first stop the bleeding. Mm. When you have a situation where things are go, going wrong, you first stop the deterioration. When I came to an Ambra state, I didn't go chasing anybody. It's not my business. I don't want to be trapped in the process of yesterday. I want to be trapped in changing the future. Mm. And like I said, if I come in today to be president of Nigeria, on day one, Nigerians will know the difference. And I'll start. When I went to Anambra State, on my speech, I told them, I said, when I live here, you will see the difference in area of education, in area of fighting extreme poverty, in area of health. And I can say it. I built the first state teaching hospital in this country. Two years. I changed, started a university campus in Ibarium from scratch. Go there, you see it. I guess the in private Alhambra State University received the highest money ever given to a state university in one year, five billion. Go there. And what I'm saying is verifiable. The first chancellor was Professor Carfo. 
You know. So it's simple. You can go there and see it. So let everything, that is how countries work. Let everybody come and show us his scorecard, what he did here without borrowing, and then we can look at another one. You don't just go and stay and say, I will do this, I'll do this, I'll do this. But the last one you were given failed. Mm. And you are borrowing money, you're doing this. Then people will turn and say, he's a nice man, he's a gentleman, he's caring. Caring with what? You're sharing our money instead of investing it properly. And you say you're caring. He's a lovely man. That's what they were telling me even when I left. They said, Peter, hey, you're not nice to people. Nice to people. I was not elected to be nice to people. I was elected to fix schools, fix roads. Today I have so many students who were senior prefect when I was governor. They had my phone number. We were connecting. Mm. Okay. And it's a, I had said, if you make first class as an Ambra person, I'll give you one million naira. I paid for over 500. They are alive today. Not to share money to people who have no who have not added no value to okay. anybody. Let, let me take more calls. Hello, how are you? Thirty seconds. Talk to. Hello, uh, good morning. Thank you. Labour Party. What's your name? My name is Mr. Busui Williams. I'm calling from Akure Ondo State. Great to have you. Can you hear us loud and clear in Akure? Yes, I can hear you. Akure Ondo State. Okay, yes. Okay, you're you're from online, right? You're Thank watching you. online. Yes, yes, okay. I'm all watching online, so I try to call. Thank okay. you. Okay. Uh, Go good ahead. morning, Mr. Peter Obi. Thank you very much. I'm. Yeah, I'm one of the people that has been advocating your your thing, Haran. Okay, quick, and uh, quick, one thing quick, I yes, yes, one thing I want to suggest is about the insecurity. I discovered that uh, these days the governor, the governor of every state, has scrapped the local government, and the local government has scrapped the world. So we have to move the security back to the world level, from a world level to local government level, then back to the state police in that, the world. I agree, I agree entirely that time. with you. Thank you, agree so entirely right, with you. thank you so much. I agree entirely with Good suggestion. That's what is happening everywhere. We should have police everywhere. When I was in university, we have university police. Okay. All right. So, YouTube, guys, we're seeing you. Uh, Voice of the People on 90.3 on YouTube. Please subscribe. Subscribe. You guys are not subscribed, you know. We are bringing all this great content. Support us. Support us. Hello. Good morning. Great to have you. Uh, Igo from... Okay, go ahead. Thirty seconds. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, uh, and my question goes like this: Just like other past presidents, they go out for their medical checkup. So, in your own case, are you going to be doing something? The other day, we hear that the president travels to London. How are you going to manage uh, your medical issues? Healthcare. Thank yeah. you very much. Well, what are me, you going to do for healthcare? Let me tell you. It's a very sad situation. We need to fix the facilities there. Go and ask people what happened to me as a governor. I visited the hospitals in Anambra State. If they have a referral, I would say I will not go abroad. If this is impossible for the doctors there, and I said you need to go to a particular place, that's a different thing. Mm. But I, I disagree. Even to today, when I'm not in office, I'm sure you've seen it online and everything. I visited also to It will shock you. I had a test in the UK. I used to live in the UK, so I have facilities and insurance. I had a test in the UK. I just go normally hair test. They didn't discover anything. I went to do tests in Onitsha. The reverend sister that did test told me to go and investigate this more. That's how I went to investigate it, and they said we need to do a procedure to remove it. So, it, this is why people do, oh, before they say, oh, I'm going to India, I'm going to Japan, okay. I'm going to this. Okay. It's not necessary. Okay, Mr. Peter Abi, would you disclose your medical records? You know, because Nigeria's yes, had of a course. case where no, we, we no, don't no. know the medical records of the, their president. And no, there's not, Mahala, there's, not the medical, there's not a medical record. So, would record. you publish your medical record? Why not? It's, the, it's, it's, it's so open. campaign? No, no, it's open. Let me even tell you. Mm. Whenever doctors said to me that, what you, what your... Your medical record is this is private. That's nothing is private. So Everything you publish it. Because, yeah, why not? And we, we, we I've never been, for example, I've never been records. sick since I was born that took me to hospital. I've gone for procedures. I've gone for... And so what was the procedure you went for? I mean, Nigerians will want to know so that they know the health record, so that they know how it fits. You need to check it. It's very simple. Okay. Anytime, anywhere. 
Okay. In fact, it's, these are things that should be in the open. Yes, there's like, nothing wrong. There's like nothing I know wrong. Obama's blood pressure, but I don't know the blood pressure of any president in Nigeria. No, no, no. Do you I know? know do, let me don't, don't go even to make a record. Do you know the net worth of anybody here? In, 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 I know Obama's net worth. I know Biden's net worth. When I was telling somebody, would you also release your net worth? Why before, not? Will you, will you, will you make it public so we know what you are worth before you go into power and when you go out of power? Would you make it public? What I own, I declared. Okay. Is that? Yeah, but you know that one is with the agents where you declare. Would you make it public for the night? No, if they want to see it public, they see it public. It's okay. not hidden now. Okay. What's you? What's even if it's with the agents? The agency can make it public. There's okay. nothing. You know, there's nothing wrong in that. Okay. You know why I'm just asking this question? Because of transparency. You know, Nigerians have gone through a lot where Ma, there are different five, The only way to show that you're serious or you've done something is I said, I left money. Hmm. If I can take that money, in terms of anything, nobody asked me. We didn't discuss with anybody. Nobody pressurized me, Peter, you must save money. I chose to save. Hmm. And it's there. Ngozi Wala pleaded for us to save money as a country, as governors, as everybody. Everybody refused. Go and read his book. It was only Peter Obi who insisted on savings. I was only supported by Gordon Imoke. The rest said no. Okay. Okay, let's take one or two more calls as we start to wrap up things. Hello, how are you doing? 30 seconds. 0700-903-903-903. Voice of people. Yeah. Point three. Hello, how are you? Good morning. I'm, I'm good day, Mr. Obi. Yeah. Yes, I one one of the concerned northerners. I come from North, and we have a, a question, and I'm yes. very happy that my call went through okay. this morning. Thank you. Yes, our concern is that, Peter, we are, are, are late, and I want you to just clarify something for us, that you have never, you have never in one time condemned the activity of IPOP. You have never condemned them, and sometimes if you are even speaking like you are trying to, you know, justify their activities. So I just want you to come yeah. out and categorically whoever, tell us your position on IPOP. Whoever, say, whoever tells okay. you that, whoever tells you that is not telling you the truth. And what I've always said is this, and I maintain that. If one is that I've watched killings in the East and everything, and this, I said, you cannot kill or do wrong things because you are agitated. It is wrong, it's criminal. Any day, any time, I condemn it. Mm. On any form of, of... You cannot say you are agitating and you're killing people. It is unacceptable. It is not acceptable. If you want to do... A, what I'm saying is that when people talk about agitation, mm. it is a different thing. We can deal with all those things by dialogue. Mm. Today, if it will be president, mm. I can tell you, I dialogue with all agitators. Mm. If this is a normal thing, a normal society, mm. a democratic society. But I will not discuss with criminals. Mm. If you kill or kidnap or men people, we will deal with you decisively. And I've done it in Alhambra as a governor. Mm. I dialogue with those who need to be dialogued. And I dealt with those who need to be dealt with. Mm. Go and check it in Alhambra said. When I came, kidnapping, everything was everywhere. And I dealt with it head on. Mm. That's how it is done. You don't go and mix, a, say, a Sunday. Oh, who is talking about agitation? You can call him and let that hear your view. Maybe he has some things you can correct. It's simple. Thank you so much. Please, everybody keep subscribing you know, to our page on YouTube, VOP Voice of the People, for more interviews like that. We'll, we'll bring most of the presidential candidates all of us, even the other ones, and uh, just try as much as possible to keep it running. And also on Facebook, we appreciate you. And on Instagram and across all of our pages. We'll take a last call now because I know Mr. Peter Abi has to go. We'll take a last call as, as we wrap things up. It's been a great day today, this Sunday. Hello, how are you, Father, today? Hello, how are you? Uh, thank God. Good morning, Rufao Senni. Yes, ma'am. You joy. Mr. I, Mr. Your joy, I love you. I yeah, miss yeah. you. I thank God I can't see to be. He did want to pray for my surgery. Uh, people be. I love my own man for children. I show that man fight in the Arab. Okay, Mr. Joy, don't worry. Don't worry. I want you to die. 
Don't worry, don't worry. Is that worry. This, is, this is the station I am now. You know, you know, I've been doing this for close to 10 years on radio in Lagos. Uh, I've, I've been longer in other states, uh, where we worked around the world, but in Lagos, so I have a lot of people that have been supporting with my own funds. Sister Joy is one of them. I think she lost her husband in an incident, and just like the blind man. So, so she just calls to say uh, uh, thank you so much for coming here. And Alexi, thank you so much for your time. I know you have a very long schedule today. Thank you. And you, have thank to go. you. And thank you for honoring me, you know, because this means a lot to me. Out of a, just honor you have for me. So we got great music next. Support VOP, Voice of the People. This is our offering. Support us. Be part of us. And uh, we keep pushing and bringing great conversations uh, your way. Today we had uh, Labour Party President Shikadi Pito B. Uh, thank you. Bless you all.